So why are genealogies in the Bible? They, they are extremely boring to read. You know, this person beget this person and this person beget this person and so on. But there's a reason for this. And it's extremely important. Because we would not know where we come from. Who our ancestors are. And how the world's population has progressed throughout history. So you got to show some respect to the scriptures and to our creator because he included these genealogies in the scriptures for our benefit. And they're very ancient and they're reliable. I'm not saying they're perfect but in the general sense, they are very reliable. So we know from Adam <clears throat> all the way down to Noah that the, the fallen angels, the watchers, whoever they were, the Anunnaki came down and copulated with human women between Adam and Noah and tried to corrupt the DNA and mess up human beings and make them hybrids. Okay? Proven fact. I've already covered that. But Noah was warned before the flood happened. Yahweh said, hey, build an ark and I'm going to protect you and your family if you do so. And I'll preserve lots of animal species Noah obeyed, and it took him a long time to build the ark, probably hundreds of years from what I see. And then um, him, his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Noah's wife and his three sons' wives, eight people in total, were saved from destruction that the rest of the world experienced, okay? All the rest, the Bible says, every living, breathing thing died that wasn't in the ark. To me, that's very conclusive. There were no Nephilim or Anunnaki or anything else that survived the flood. So that's disproven by what the Bible says. Every living thing that had breath inside them died on the face of the earth, except for Noah and his family, eight people, and the animals in the ark with them. That being said, just giving you a background, let's look at what happened after, after 40 days and 40 nights, the great flood engulfed the earth and killed everybody except Noah and his family in the ark. And the point where the waters started to recede from the face of the earth, they started to dry up according to Yahweh's edict. And then the ark, the boat that Noah built came to rest on the mountains of Ararat while the waters were receding. Keep in mind, only eight people were alive on the face of the damn earth, folks. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, his sons, Noah's wife, and his sons' wives. Eight people. That's it. And the book of Peter reaffirms that. So let's look at what happened. <clears throat> and we're looking at Genesis chapter 8. Now this is, this is exactly after the end of the flood when the water started drying up. 
And in the seventh month, Genesis chapter 8. In the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Where is Ararat? Let's look at it real quick. So this is Turkey, modern Turkey, but it's the same region. And here is Mount Ararat, where Noah's Ark, with the eight people, came to rest on in those mountains. It didn't say a single mountain. In the Hebrew, it says what? Mountains of Ararat. So, by the way, if anybody tells you I found Noah's Ark or any other kind of crap like that, you know, take that with a grain of salt because there's a mountain region in Turkey. And by the way, the ark was made out of wood. So, you know, we're talking, we're talking like 4,000 years plus ago. You think that wood has survived till now? Highly unlikely. But anyway, we have to believe what the scriptures say. Mount Ararat, the mountains of Ararat. And that's what the scripture says. And the waters continued to abate until the 10th month. That means the waters slowly receded from the face of the earth. The earth absorbed the waters. There was no more rain and flooding until the tops of the mountains were seen and you can go reread the rest of this to your heart's content. But the basic facts are the ark did come to rest. Where? In modern day Turkey on the mountains of Ararat. Now look down here. Here's Israel. Here's Syria. There's Iraq. Armenia, Russia, Georgia, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania. All right, so this is a central location pretty much in Eastern Europe. And what I want to show you through this genealogy is this is extremely important. By the way, down here is uh, Northern Africa, 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 Egypt, and there's Saudi Arabia, all these other countries down here to the south, there's Africa, this, this region, Mediterranean Sea. So let's look at the genealogy and see what it tells us. Do you trust in your Bible? I hope so. Nations descended from Noah. Look at the chapter. Genesis chapter 10. This is after Noah and his sons and their wives came out of the ark and replenished the earth. Very ancient times, very ancient text. These are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Three sons, folks, and their wives. From this three descendants of Noah, all the earth that exists now has been repopulated because they were all wiped out before the flood. But sons were born to them after the flood. Who? Who is them? Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now listen carefully because I'm just giving a general description and I'm not 100% positive on everything, but the vast majority I am. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tiras. Now, 
it's it's widely known and understood that Gomer and Magog are part of Russia. So what what I'm telling you here is that the sons of Japheth went to this region, Russia, Armenia, and other places like way over here in Greece and Europe. That's where a lot of white skinned people come from. All right. For the most part, because these tribes did intermingle. The sons of Gomer, Gomer is a, is a descendant of Japheth. The sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Ripat, and Torgama. And these have to do with other tribes white skinned or mixed or not. The sons of Javan, Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. And these mostly have to do with Western European nations. From these, the coastland people spread in their lands, each with his own language. Now, how did that happen? The language got corrupted. Yeah, we'll see that in a minute by their clans and their nations. So here we go with another son of Noah, Ham. Remember, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, three sons of Noah. The sons of Ham, Cush. Egypt, Put, and Canaan. So, and I've, I've talked to you about this before, that uh, these were mostly dark, darker skinned color uh, descendants. The sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Sapta, Rama, and Saptika. The sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dedan. So these all have to do and are assimilated with mostly, mostly African countries, tribes. So Cush, Cush is a descendant of Ham, father Nimrod. He was the first on earth to be a mighty man. And I've talked to you about this before. He began to be a giant on the earth. So this is where the Nephilim, the Anunnaki, the Anunnaki interbred with the daughters of men and produced Nephilim giants and monstrosities. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. And I've told you before, in the face of or against, he was a monster. Kinigos in the Greek means monster, monstrosity. He was a monst he is a great monstrosity in Antion. That means against Yahweh. Therefore it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter against Yahweh. The beginning of his kingdom was what? Babel, Eric, Akkad, Kauna, in the land of Shinar. We're talking about ancient Iraq. Where all this paganism came from. All right. From that land, he went into Assyria. No, I told you before. Out of that land, this person went out, Asher, that's another name, it's not a country, not Assyria, Asher is another name for Nimrod. He went out and he built Nineveh, Raboth, Ir, Kala, and race in between Nineveh and Kala, that is the great city. So these pagan nations were inhabited by descendants of the Anunnaki, the fallen angels, cohabiting with women and produced ab absurd monstrosities like giants and powerful, powerful uh, hybrid humans. Pathrosim Kesluhim, from whom the Philistines came, you know, the Philistines were 
a big enemy of Israel and Kaphtarim. Canaan, another descendant of Ham, Noah's son, fathered Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth. And then Jebusites, the Amorites, and the Girgasites, the Hivites, the Archites, the Sinites, the Av, Arvidites, the Zimmerites, and the Hamathites. Afterward, the clans of Canaan, Canaanites dispersed. So we have this corrupt descendants of what we call giants, descendants of the Anunnaki, the fallen angels, evil spirits, that interbred with humans produced all these people. And they became enemies of Yahweh's chosen people through Abraham. And the territory of the Canaanites extended from Sidon to the direction of Gerar as far as Gaza. That has to do with the Philistines. And in the direction of Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zebulim. Zebim, as far as Lasha. These are the sons of Ham by their clans, their languages, their lands, and their nations. Okay, you can go back and read this. But every person that was born of Ham and their descendants were part of an interbreeding with fallen angels and human women. And that's why they were so evil. And they practiced, all these tribes practiced human sacrifice and worshiping Satan. It's undeniable. It is in your face. It's real. So let's look at Shem. So we've already looked at Japheth. We've looked at Ham. And now Shem, the three sons of Noah. To Shem also the father of all the children of Eber. Now, by the way, Eber is the word for Hebrew. The first Hebrew was born to Shem. So that's where the Israelites came from. He's the elder brother of Japheth, the firstborn, by the way. Eber's the firstborn. Children were born, the sons of Shem, Elam, Asher, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram, Uz, Hul, Gether, and Mash. Arphaxad fathered Shelah. And Sheila fathered Eber. To Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg. For in his days, the earth was divided. That means you can research this. It, the earth used to be like Pangaea. It was not divided. You can look that up on Google. But it was divided, and that's why all these cultures across the world, same, they share the same architecture and similar beliefs in different languages. And his brother name, his brother's name was Jotan, Joktan. <clears throat> Joktan fathered Amadad, Shelef, Havzarmeth, Jera, Hadaram, Uzal, Dikla, Obal, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the sons of Joktan. We're still talking about the descendants of Shem. The territory in which they lived extended from Mesha in the direction of Sephar to the hill country of the east. These are the sons of Shem by their clans, their languages, their lands, and their nations. These are the clans of the sons of Noah, according to their genealogies in their nations 
and from these the nations, and there were 70 of them when they spread out abroad on the earth after the flood. So why, you know, why this long video? Why all these descriptions? Because you got to know where you come from. And you got to put your trust in the scriptures. All right. Take a look at that map. All these nations came from one person and his family. And that was Noah. Noah's wife. Noah's three sons and their three wives. And the ark after the flood landed on Mount Ararat. And his three sons and their descendants, which multiplied rapidly, spread out through all of the Middle East and Europe over time. And we are all descendants of the three sons of Noah, all of us. Now, for the most part, we are not pure blood. None of us are. Don't even think that. That's absurd. Because over the centuries and the millennia, all three of the, tri of the tribes that belong to the sons of Noah intermingled in all these countries. They migrated. They interbred. You are not a pure white person. I don't care who you are. You are not a pure black person or a, a pure Jew or Semite because over time they've all mixed. But what's the most important thing? Not your bloodlines. If you are the true Israel, according to the book of Galatians, you're an Israelite Israel means he who overcomes with L, overcomes with God. If you're a true Israelite, it's of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, and not from your bloodlines like the Jews here in Israel falsely believed during the, Christ, the time of Christ. Is not your bloodlines. It's whether Yahweh anoints you and makes you born again of the Holy Spirit. And that's it. That's it. Because Yahweh has been grafting in the Gentiles and adopting them for over 2,000 years. Please rewatch this video if you don't get the general idea of it. Don't understand it. I've explained it as succinctly as I can. And folks, this is from over 30 years of study of the Bible and research into history. And I hope Yahweh blesses you with this.